What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about some sustainment topics. And in case you couldn't tell, we're not really going hardcore today, which is why I have a uh, flower pattern mug with some really nice coffee that Mitchell made me hand ground. Instead of talking about tactics, talking about all of the problems that are involved in sustainment, we're going to talk about one of the most important things, how to purify your water. If you don't purify your water, you're going to end up getting sick. And we really want to avoid that if at all possible. So today we're going to talk about commonly available resources. When I say commonly available, everything that I used, I bought on Amazon for pretty cheap. And that's not because I wanted to cheap out or not spend the money for the video, but I know that most people watching this are not going to go spend $2,000 on a pack and multiple layer water filtration systems. So we polled a bunch of guys that have spent a lot of time overseas, guys that have worked solo, guys that have worked in teams, and figured out what they liked and what was the most reliable systems that they had for individual water filtration, layered water filtration, and then individual resources, you know, like a jet boil or a life straw and things like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. Real quick before we get started, I want to thank our biggest sponsor of the channel, which is Texas Loot. We've been partnered with them for a while. They are based in Houston, and uh, of course they ship all over the country. If you use code SQUATS, that's S-Q-U-A-T-S, you get free shipping, uh, anything from them. So make sure you use that, that way they know that I'm actually plugging them. I get all kinds of stuff from them. Um, obviously they're sponsoring us and supplying us, but a few of the things that I'm actually running that you could get from them, Obviously LWRCs, mounts for your optics, your optic, lasers, lights, this uh, Huxworks suppressor, which is my favorite suppressor by far that I've ever used. Um, pretty much anything you see on the, on the weapon system, you could get there. Uh, they also sell all kinds of stuff, the full suite of Ferro Concepts equipment, pretty much anything you can think of. And if they don't have it and you email them, I bet you they'll find it for you. So give them a follow, check them out, texasloot.com. I know you guys are going to ask, so I'm just trying to save myself having to answer a bunch of comments. Uh, this is the Onward Research Recce Rig. That's Mike Jones or Grand Thumb's company. Uh, I put some other things on it. It's not really important. It's not the point of the video, but just because I knew you were going to ask. So I, right now I have six mags in it, a radio, a Nalgene, full med, and then whatever other trinkets I want to put in there, a simple pouch, to and include an extra tourniquet on the bottom. Okay, another thing I know you guys are going to ask about, but it's... Uh, not the purpose of the video. However, I did get this, like I said, on Amazon because it's cheap, it's readily available. I haven't spent $600 to test something out. I really like to buy things I'm gonna test. For the purposes of making this video and just practicing rucking and all that kind of stuff, this is the pack I bought. It was like $89 on Amazon. I do not remember the brand name. Please don't ask me. Go on Amazon and type in, you know, rucksack or whatever. I actually do like a lot of the features about it, but we're gonna gloss over some of that. I'm also not gonna talk about how to pack your ruck because we have a whole video on that from Blake Flannery and that will be linked in this video. Okay, so some of the things that we think you absolutely have to have for this kind of deal, some sort of hard water bottle. I personally am not a fan of a water bladder. That is gonna be something that typically gets pressure put on it. You have it in your pack, on your rig, something. And if it pops or gets torn uh, while it's full of water, you're kinda of up the creek without a paddle. It's gonna leak, stuff's gonna get wet and chafe and all that kind of thing. And then if you don't have a backup or another bag, you basically don't have a way to hold your clean water. So four liters roughly is about what you might need in a day if you're moving, minimum. So four Nalgene's or four hard water bottles of some type uh, I like Nalgene's because they have a wide open mouth, which is easier to pour clean water into and things like that. There are also some companies uh, that make tops for these that you can put a uh, tube on, put it upside down in your pack and actually use it similar to uh, some sort of water bag, like a Camelback or whatever else. So you need some of these, minimum four-ish. A couple other things we're going to talk about, cheesecloth, right, made in China because it came from Amazon. Cheesecloth is the kind of thing you can use to prep your water. So I can throw it over a, you know, a bucket or a bag if the water's really scummy. We'll talk about that more. This will also help later when you use our pellets. So that takes me to the next thing. These are Procter & Gamble uh, water purifier packs. I got, I think 250 of them for like a hundred bucks. And each packet is good for 
two and a half gallons or 10 liters of water. So with one of these, I can make enough for two and a half days of water for me individually. And I have, you know, like 80 of these bad boys in my pack. Great thing to have. All right, the last thing uh, that I'm actually keeping in my pack with me right now is the platypus grav bag or gravity bag. This is essentially a system that uses gravity to force water through an inline filter from a dirty bag into a clean bag. So we're gonna show you all these things, how they can be used in conjunction with each other because the more you can layer your systems, possibly the better. Um, but any one of these systems could technically be used by itself, not the cheesecloth that's just for filtering chunks of you know, debris or detritus or whatever else, bugs and things like that. But the pellets, the grab bag, uh, those can both be used by themselves. If you use them in conjunction, you're less likely to get you know, dysentery or whatever else. And then we're also gonna show you uh, jet boil, talk about boiling water in certain volumes, certain times, temperatures, and all that crap. And we're also gonna talk about individual resources like a life straw. Some of you may be familiar with life straw, but essentially you have to be at the water source drinking what you want and then it's done. It doesn't provide any storage and that presents its own problems. So without further ado, we'll get into actually using some of these and talking about them as you watch us actually utilize the systems. All right, so these are um, PNG purifier of water beads. And it sounds like BS, they sound like magic. And a guy who um, has been all over the world using them told me about them. So I did some research. I'm gonna read to you what it says on the label so you can also understand that this is some sort of magical item. It says, mix well with 10 liters of water, stir for five minutes, let the water stand for five minutes. If the water is not clear, stir it again until the flock is separated, F-L-O-C. And that's the, that's the crap that's being filtered out by the beads. Uh, use a clean, thick, 100% cotton cloth without any holes. Dispose of the filtered flock away from children and animals. So essentially what we're gonna do is, we have our dirty bucket. Now, in this same scenario, are you gonna have a bucket? I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. This is just a demonstration, okay? So before I get the, Wee, you have a bright blue bucket in the sustainment environment, just, just shut up. We're gonna filter the water with this first in here. And then once the flock is separated, we're gonna use that cheesecloth we showed you earlier, and we're gonna pour this into the dirty bag of the grab filter system. Why would we layer those systems? Well, anytime you're in a place where you're not sure what the quality of the water is, it's not running water, for example, we're using a, a pond or some sort of stagnant body or whatever it is. <laughs> You have a higher chance of there being, you know, viral bodies, uh, other pathogens, bacteria, parasites, you know, small worms and things like that. If we can avoid any of that crap, we should. If we can layer our systems, we're more likely to catch all of it. Now, this is getting used in mud holes in Africa and it works fine, but I'm not trying to get dysentery after this video, so I'm gonna show you guys how to layer and filter things at least twice. Okay. Main thing when you're grabbing your water is that you don't want to introduce a bunch of dirt and sediment and leaves, right? So something you could be doing is throwing some sort of cloth over here. You could have a dirty and a clean filtration cloth. Uh, if I filtered this water, grabbing it with a bucket with the cloth over it to keep heavy sediment out, I wouldn't want to use that cloth again to then pour the cleaned water, right? So you need to keep in mind that with almost any system, you need a dirty and a clean. For this one, this is not a super muddy area. Obviously the water's cloudy, but there's not big chunks of dirt right here. So I'm just gonna dump the bucket in, scoop some out, uh, get roughly two and a half gallons, get this thing about halfway full, and we'll go from there. All right. Essentially what this is, is just some sort of a pool cleaner, chlorine type of mixture that's not toxic for you to drink in the percentage that it's prescribed that you put in the water. It says on here 0.546% uh, calcium hypochlorate. So essentially just chlorine. Um, that kills everything. That's why we put it in pools, right? So we're just gonna put this in here and stir it for five minutes according to the label. It doesn't have any sort of like convenient pull tab on it. And I can feel how, because it's been compressed in a package, there's little bits caked up in the corners. So just like anything, you want to make sure all that crap is settled down where you're not losing any of it when you open it up. So I'm just going to cut it open here. And you can see, lost a little bit of the powder. If you can avoid all of it blowing away in the wind, that'd be good too. So I'm going to keep it low. But make sure it's 
sure we get all those goodies out. Don't litter. Throw this stuff away. All right, I think that's pretty much it. So <clears throat> now I'm gonna stir it for five minutes. I look like I'm making tea, you know, I'm like pouring the tea in. You can see the lack of coordination with my right hand. I'm like, mm. But yeah, totally switch shoulders and shoot with your off hand. That'll, that'll go well for you. So actually, interestingly enough, you can start, you're starting to see beads form and everything's starting to clump up. So you may not be able to really tell that as it stops moving. See how the beads are starting to form? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. This is one of those like, where did you see yourself in five years type of videos. Stirring water in a bucket. All right, five minutes. If you wanna come check this out, see how it looks like diarrhea now? Essentially what this has done is those little pellets in there have killed everything and causing it to clump together. And that's what the label calls flock, F-L-O-C. -L -L I had never seen that word before this. It says to let that settle for five minutes. So the same amount you stir for, the same amount you let it settle for. Again, just easy way to remember that, it says if the water's not clear at the end of the five minutes of it settling, you just stir it for another five. You don't double down on the treatment because it's gonna raise that toxicity or that chemical taste. Um, Come look at it again, it's disgusting. Um, so we're gonna let that settle for five. And then we're gonna have to filter that out with the cloth into our dirty bag. Pretty cool. Something to note, and this is from talking to Blake, who's done this a lot, opposed. How much water do you actually need per day? And he would say, you know, two liters or a half gallon-ish for stationary. If you're just sitting around, to me that sounds like a lot, right? As a cop driving around in a patrol car, I didn't want to drink too much water because you got to piss all the time. But in that environment, you have to be ready and hydrated at any time to do whatever explosive action it is. So you got to drink a lot more water. Um, half a gallon is a decent bit for most people in America that are just living off Diet Coke and whatever else. This is 2.5 gallons of water. If you see how much that is, compared to what you might picture, that's five days of stationary water in one packet. And again, I got 250 of these packets for like 120 bucks. So think about 250 times five. If you're not you know, going long distances, if you're, uh, if you're rucking a long time, at least a gallon is what Blake would suggest. Um, so and we'll, we'll plug it later, but if you take his sustainment class, water's gonna be a big part of it. Obviously, you gotta have water to live. I personally am like 75% water. I don't know about you guys, so. That's how it feels in there. Looks like diarrhea. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes, and uh, you can see what looks like sort of a loose turd in there. Um, it's uh, disgusting. So we're gonna filter that out with that cheesecloth. The label says, you know, a, a heavy cotton cloth with no holes, so we're gonna double or triple up that cheesecloth, put it over the bucket, dump it into our dirty bag, which is then gonna run through the line, into the inline filter, into the clean bag. And from there, we have you know, however many liters of uh, clean water. This is technically 10 liters, so we're not gonna use it all, um, but it's just meant for demo. Another thing to consider if you have um, this type of dual system is getting multiple dirty bags and multiple clean bags or more water storage. That we get into the whole sustainment thing of like, what am I trying to do? Am I trying to purify water to use for days, like at a campsite? Am I trying to purify water that I'm just using for me or for my squad or whatever else? The other thing is, and again, I said at the beginning, this is not a tactics class, if you grab water from the watering hole and you filter it right here, everybody else in the area, including the wild animals and everything else, needs water. So don't do it like you see it in the video where you grab the water out the thing and you're like, hey, and you stir it for five minutes and you wait around for five minutes. This is, this is not supposed to be a sustainment tactics class, just a reminder. So in just a few moments, we'll show you how to use this bag. So we never wanna contaminate our clean bag, obviously. 
The dirty bag, you dirty, dirty bag. Hopefully that's on video. Oh yeah. All right. So one of the things to consider on this, read the damn manual, okay? You can't afford to half-ass this and contaminate the water that you just tried to purify. If we missed something in there, if a piece of the flop gets in there and it contains some sort of, you know, other issue, um, that's why we're double filtering. Because like I said, I'm not trying to get dysentery just by showing you how these products work. So, in the manual it says uh, black and gray is dirty and blue and white is clean. Um, that's going to get used as a bad sound bite. But essentially, the dirty reservoir, notice one of the things I really like about the platypus bag is it has a sort of like a dirt line. So what you can do is pour all your stuff in here and even if there is some flock or some dirt or whatever we miss, it's going to settle down to below that line. And once you have that hung or wherever you're putting it and you let it settle before you just open the, the filtration, um, you're, you're going to get a little bit more success in not clogging your filter because you're not letting as much crap get into it. All right. You're gonna have some control over when you open the flow. Remember, this is a gravity bag. So there's air in the filter. Um, there's all kind of other stuff going on. So by having it clamped off right here, when we add the water to here, it's not gonna just start going straight through. This is what controls when it's time to allow water through the filter. Remember we said earlier the blue side is this side. I'm not even gonna connect it to the clean bag. Just in case something goes wrong, something leaks, I don't get any accidental dirty water into my clean bag because then I have to try to clean the bag, right? And that's a, that's a no-no. So to avoid, again, safety comes first, to avoid any mishaps, we don't even fool with plugging this into the clean bag until we're ready to actually send it. And that's once we've made sure that it's actually working. All right, so work smarter, not harder. I'm using a bucket. You may not actually be using a bucket in whatever situation you're in, but what I'm gonna do is create a little bit of line that I'm gonna be able to anchor this cheesecloth around it with so that I'm not uh, doing too much. Um, obviously, Mitch is filming, so he's not gonna be helping me hold on to it. If you were in an environment where you had a bunch of people helping out, you can have somebody hold the bag, somebody hold the cloth, somebody hold the bucket or whatever else. So, uh, not a knot tying class, but, um, there's some pretty handy little stuff you can do with knots that makes life a lot easier. Uh, read a book, watch a movie, you know. Get some knowledge about knots. It's like making a dumpling. OTG cooking show win. And the whole point of doing these two loops like this is just so I can work the tension without any help. And if I'd have burnt this end, which I'm gonna do like I did the others, it'll allow me to get that through there pretty easily. We definitely wanna keep the flame away from the cheesecloth. Working with tiny, tiny cordage like this drives me insane. But it is what it is. Okay, so we're gonna anchor that down. There it goes. And now, it ain't going anywhere. Now that our bucket looks like Lawrence of Arabia, we're going to pour the water into our dirty bag. Remember, we don't want to get any of that into the clean line, so I'm just going to separate it over. You could also just disconnect this, um, which, again, for the sake of just completely anal level of safety, now there's no way we're getting dirty water on any of our stuff because it's separated. This can be pretty tricky. Um, if you're an uncoordinated homeschool kid, maybe it's going to be a problem. But the idea is we want to pour it in such a way that we don't get any of that flock into the clean bag, or the dirty bag, rather. We also don't want to waste. So you see how it's coming out the edges? I'm losing water. So figuring out the way you want to do this, whether it's bag to bag or not, is important. Check out how clean it is already. That doesn't even look like it just came out of that dirty ass pond. But uh, that's drinkable technically according to the certification on the package. We're just showing you multiple methods. We might as well do partially cleaned into cleaned. All right, let's try this one more time and I'm actually gonna use the handle. Again, I'm doing this alone because the idea is most of you don't have any friends. So, 
Thanks, Mitchell. What's one way we could make this better? Well, we want to pick the back of the bucket up, right? So use a prop, like the MRE says, a rock or something. So I'm going to use my bag and uh, create a fulcrum for myself. Again, work smarter, not harder. This is not a difficult concept. You know, they make this thing called a funnel. Um, I heard about one time. That's pretty cool. You can just have one of those. All right, we'll call it for there, just for the sake of the demo, and show you what it looks like as it drains. Again, we never want to touch the tip with the dirty side. So, dirty to dirty, no exposure of clean yet. Hang this over here. Something to consider, do we want tension ever on any of these lines? The answer is no. So, we want to make sure we have this stored in such a way that there's gravitational pull, obviously. If this bag was up here, there's no pull, right? That's physics or something. So we want to attach this thing where it's not pulling on the line, but it's below the filter. That's pretty much it. So I've taken off the uh, protective cap for this. As you can see, there's no like one-way valve or anything. So this is a really important piece of this system. Again, I'm not touching the threads or anything with anything dirty. I'm being careful to take that cap off. If I was you, I'd store it somewhere so you don't lose it put it in your pocket or whatever else, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and attach the clean line. It's a 90 degree on this one. You can go buy other systems if you don't like the 90. Make sure it's on there, don't cross thread it. You'd hate to leave and come back to your camp and all your clean water went out in the ground because you didn't take two seconds to make sure this was all right. Now notice, there's no water going into this tube right? Because there's air in it, all right? When we open this up, it starts running. It's going to go into that inline filter. That filter is going to run it into the bag, and voila. Double filtered chlorinated water. And what amazes me is like how fast these gravity bags filter water. Yeah, so this one is four liters in two minutes. So if you talk about, if we weren't trying to make it look good for the camera and I wasn't doing my Saudi Arabia head wrap on that bucket. Don't blow me up. Don't need any jihad for that comment. Um, if we're doing all these things really efficiently, it maybe take 15 minutes to get four liters of water if you're even double uh, filtering. If we weren't double filtering, I'd have taken that dirty bag and going and run over to my camp and hooked it up and it'd have been like this. There are some um, like after maintenance things you're supposed to do, which we'll show you, but essentially what it boils down to, no pun intended, is you don't want to just leave sediment and crap in this. So if you're planning to filter four liters of water, the manual says to leave a liter. And then what you're gonna do is, leave a liter in the clean bag, I'm sorry. When you dump your clean water back into your hard bottles or whatever your storage is, if you're you know, building up at a campsite or you're just putting water on your person, leave about a liter in the clean bag when it's all said and done. And you're actually gonna reverse this system. That's why, as you can see, this has a hanger on it as well and you're gonna force a liter of clean water back through the filter backflow. And what that's doing is any chunks of the flocking or any of that other BS that might be in there, especially if you just used your dirty bag to hit the pond, it's gonna blow that out of the filter. Because keep in mind the filter, these are good for pathogens, microscopic parasites and all that kind of stuff, but they're also filtering out big chunks. So there could be something that you and I still can't even see, but it's a piece of dirt, sediment, debris, whatever, that's now occluding the flow of the filter. So in order to increase your filter life, you need to do that backflow system. Now, if you take a look at this mesh, you see how there's a, a line or sediment line here? If we hadn't pre-filtered this, I would have wanted to wait about 10 minutes to let that sediment filter down to the bottom. 
Some of the guys I've talked to actually use those PNG filter tablets in their water bags. And what they do is just kind of like micro dose it. You know, it's roughly um, 10 liters per uh, packet. So what they're doing is, okay, this is about four or five. They do half a packet in there and it's gonna create that flock at the bottom. And then they're just straight up filtering it through, reverse filtering it. So they're not using two systems. What's good about this is, if I'm trying to just keep filtering water, I can take that clean water, put it in my Nalgene's, take that, put it in the dirty bag, and I just keep pushing double filtered water out to store. So now we gotta get this into a Nalgene, so we'll show you that. One quick tip I forgot to mention, uh, adult ADHD is terrible. If uh, you wanna move this little doodad, I don't know what it's called, all the way down to the bottom, that's gonna allow you to cut your water flow off where you don't lose stuff in the clean line. Otherwise, when you unscrewed this bad boy, any water below that clip is gonna come flowing out, right? So now I can take the clean water bag off. Don't over tighten it, don't, don't mongo tighten it and then have it break. But now I have clean water and I can fill my Nalgene's up. And I'll just use the one that's on me that's empty for demo purposes. This is an $8 pouch I got on Amazon. Um, there are plenty of really good Nalgene pouches. I have several of the ones from Spiritus. But because we were doing the, um, hey, what's readily available and cheap demo, that's what I'm using for this right here. But uh, you'll see on another kit video, we're gonna film where I use the Spiritus one as well. We'll demo that. Um, these filters are 80 bucks a piece. The whole system was like, I think 180. So if you can save up your shekels and spend like 250 bucks, get an extra filter, which I do have, get extra um, whatever size tubing this is. I wanna say it's half inch tubing, quarter inch tubing. Get a bunch of extras, because if this, if this line gets cut, now what? Oh, I just can't filter water? Have redundancy of everything, and of course I have that with me. So without further ado, we don't want to waste the good clean water that we just had, so we want to be very careful with it. Make sure that that's where it needs to be. by keeping the water level below, we're good. Now, remember that nozzle I had, let's say you only have one Nalgene, or maybe two, and this thing holds four liters, and you're doing this somewhere that you're um, using you know, as a sustainment site, you can use this to store water. So you would just cap it. Oh no, I lost it. You just cap it, and now you have a clean water bag, right? Now what I'm about to show you guys is I'm gonna reverse filter this back through the dirty bag like it says to on the manual, and I'm actually gonna open the dirty bag and it's just gonna flow out. And that's also helping to purify the dirty bag so I don't have a bunch of bacteria and stuff sitting in a wet environment. Because another thing to think about is, what if I don't need to filter water for three or four days? I'm just sitting still, trying not to go to the watering hole a lot. Do I wanna leave water in these? Is there a time when I can let them dry out? So I wanna take as much care as I can to not leave a dirty, item full of bacteria sitting with water in it. I think it's time to drink some. Have y'all seen that uh, old 7-Up commercial? It's from like the 70s and the guy goes crisp and refreshing. Tastes better than tap water, tell you that much. Isn't that amazing? And that came from right over there in that dirty ass pond. So cool. So I've used this system uh, just with clean water to test that it worked. And of course now we're drinking stagnant water. When I go back to Louisiana, uh, I'm gonna do some of my own content on using like more big picture sustainment stuff. And I'm gonna use the Amit River, which is notoriously disgusting, like disgusting. Um, so we'll show some other stuff with that too. But without further ado, let's clean this dirty bag. I'm forcing it through. All right, so manuals are important. Make sure that you read them. Um, when I read a quarter on here, I thought it meant a quarter of the bag. It's actually a quarter liter that has to be pushed through here, which is uh, like a 16th of the bag, which we've already pushed through. Um, once you've done that, then you're supposed to test the filter integrity, which requires you pulling the hoses off and actually blowing through the filter. And if you can't blow air through it, you're good. 
Um, if you start to get little bubbles coming through the filter, the filter's compromised because it's allowing something that big to go through. Um, and that's how you can just continue to test your filter every time you're done using it. Because if you don't, and you're able to blow that water through the hose, um, and then you go to use it, bagging something, and it doesn't actually filter, then you're gonna get sick. And you were like, well, my filter didn't work. Test it after every use. It's kind of like doing a press check. It's free. Make sure your crap works before you use it next time. All right, what I was talking about on the bubbles, um, the last step before storage, which we're not gonna do, because the idea is you're continuing to get water, um, is to do a back pressure test to make sure that the filter's not compromised. Something large isn't broken it up, or it's not, you know, faulty or whatever. And this is the first thing you're actually supposed to do when you buy it as well, is make sure it works. Um, so I'm gonna blow really hard on this, and there's gonna be a straight stream of water. If I saw a bunch of bubbles shooting through it, that means that the air I'm pushing into the line is getting through the filter. Steady stream, right? These bubbles were already down here. So one more time, it's a steady stream of water, which is what we wanna see. So everything's hunky-dory. Uh, we just wanna get the water out of the lines. And once that's done, you can store it. Okay, so we've done the uh, filtration packets. We've done the gravity bag. It's very, um, hey, I don't have time. Uh, I can't make a fire or whatever else. There's tactical reasons to use either one of those. There's availability of resources, reasons to use either one of those. Like you can't make a fire, it doesn't make sense to make a fire. What if we can use fire? It's like the oldest way to purify water that there is, right? So there's ways to make fire that are really hard. There's fire bows, you know, there's building an actual fire um, with whatever other resources like wax tablets, lighters, you know, pocket lint or whatever you have. But let's talk about not fighting on hard mode. What if we wanted to do something like use a jet boil? So jet boil is a really uh, innovative product. Uh, a lot of my guys use them, and this came highly recommended. And this is actually Mitchell's kit. There are some little unique add-ons and things that you should probably consider getting if you're gonna run one. For example, if you're using it for water purification, you need to get the little standoff tray, because if you don't, you might melt a part of it. And we don't wanna melt and ruin stuff if it's part of our sustainment kit, so just understanding the pros and cons, right? Ask me how I know. Yeah. <laughs> So um, this holds 1.5 liters. Um, what's the time to boil 1.5 liters in this thing? Well, that's gonna depend on your temperature and your altitude. You know, if it's uh, 10 degrees outside, boiling water is gonna take a little longer than if it's 95, like it would be in Louisiana. Also, Louisiana's sea level. If I'm up in the mountains, it's gonna be a different uh, way that all those environmental factors affect the boiling rate for water. And also, how long do we need to boil the water? Um, so part of the reason that we want to boil it could be what if we had all those other problems, all those other solutions to the problem of dirty water, but we know that there's some sort of viral contaminant. For example, we're in Africa somewhere where they have a, a viral contaminants just floating in the water. Maybe we wouldn't want to boil it anyway. We might do the filtration pellets and then also boil because this flock that's floating down there is all the nasty, it's all the chunks of things. Chlorine has killed a lot of it. But like I said, I really don't want to get dysentery. So maybe we boil it because we need to, um, or we're not fighting on hard mode and we have a place where we can make fire, heat, light, and all those things are available to us. So a um, couple things to consider, like we said, preparation, cleaning. If you're gonna have something you boil water in and you also are using it to cook, you need to be able to clean it between. Um, think about the, the clean water that you're making, maybe store some of it to use for cleaning later. For washing this thing out maybe keep a little sponge you can rinse a um, little squirt bottle of uh, dish soap or something like that again this is depending on how long you're out in the field what are you planning for what's the situation not a tactical class but i just want you guys to consider some things okay so let's get this bad boy started i'm actually going to start it before i put the pot on it um, and i'm going to put water in the pot first so i'm going to leave that there since you've got it level that's another thing to consider if i'm filling this up with water and homie is tilted and it falls off we've just wasted our collected water, right? So we got that somewhat level, we're gonna leave it there. Go back to our pre-filtered water, and this should be a little bit easier than the bag because this thing is pretty rigid. Pretty slow drip on that cheesecloth, right? It's keeping a lot of that flocking out. But that's good. It's keeping all that, that crud and gradu out of there. Now, if I didn't want to do this the hard way, I'd have it propped up on something and just let, be letting gravity do its work on its own. Definitely don't want to waste any if I don't have to. So there's ways to do this a little bit easier. Like I said, maybe get a funnel, you know. All right. 
me get that uh, tree sperm out of there. A little chunk of pollen for you, for your trouble. All right, we're gonna get the jet boil started. It's, uh, it's windy right now, so something else to consider. Um, have a good fire starting method. These things are kind of notorious for their starters going out. I don't wanna only have this to rely on as my source of heat and light and flame and all that, and also only rely on the starter that comes with it. Everything that you have on your kit should do at least two things or have some redundancy. Just like I talked about with the water filter, you need to have a way to start this thing other than what comes on it. And you already showed me earlier when we were talking about it, it's broken. So I'm gonna use the BIC for that, but because it's windy, I'm gonna come over here, block it a little bit. We're gonna turn this thing up to the plus side, which that means more. So gas comes out. There we go. That sound means heat is coming out. Superheated gas. All right. Put her on there. I want to make sure it's balanced before I just let go of it. And dial her all the way up. Kind of reminds me of a crawfish boil back home. Speaking of sustainment food, those poor bastards got here and were like, that bug coming out of the mud looks good. That's how hungry they were. Now it's a cultural thing, so. All right, so we're at about four minutes and we're starting to see bubbles. Now the just general common knowledge, if you have truly contaminated water, you need to boil it for at least one minute rolling boil. So I'm thinking it's not gonna get to a rolling boil for at least five. Um, think about how much fuel you have, what your cost is on that, how much water can I boil for the most efficient amount of time. Um, this is not the pot that comes directly with this system. So you can, there's a smaller one that's got more intimate contact with the burner and it's gonna boil faster, but it's gonna be less water. So pros and cons to all that stuff. We're at 600 foot above sea level um, and the amount of time it's taken to boil, it's poured right at one liter, uh, you know, is, is pretty significant. Um, if you had like a, a rolling fire going, this would boil a lot faster, but you also have to have the kind of stuff that you can stick in a fire. So me personally, I use the old school GI issue uh, coffee mug. It's got that like kidney bean shape and I think it's like a half liter-ish. Um, and then I also have like an old school steel bottomed percolator coffee pot, but I don't use the top filtration. And that's what I cook a lot of my food in. And I can boil roughly a liter in both of those things in an actual fire pretty quickly. Um, but that requires I build a fire and maintain a fire. Something like this means even in really crappy conditions, I can still purify water without having to build an actual fire. So layer your systems, don't just have one thing you rely on. This is great in a pinch. It's great in an environment where you don't want to build a big fire or maybe you can't keep one because of rain, etc. Okay, so it took about six minutes to actually really rolling boil and we've let it go for a minute or two, just so you could really see what we mean by a rolling boil. Um, I'm gonna reduce it just a little bit. But one of the things we should talk about in sustainment stuff, especially if I have the ability to purify all this water, I should probably keep my morale high. Everyone's seen the video of the guy in the Ukrainian trench and a little drone goes to drop supplies to him and it's a big pack of dip. Why does a dude need dip in a trench? It makes him feel better, right? What can we do that increases our morale? Well, unless you're some kind of communist, you probably love coffee. And uh, I really love coffee, especially finely ground. We call this camp coffee. It's almost similar to like a Turkish coffee, but essentially you get fine ground coffee beans and you're gonna put them straight into the boiling water, stir it a little bit, let it boil for a minute or so, cut the heat off, and the grounds are gonna settle down to the bottom almost like into a cake. And then you just pour the coffee off the top into your coffee mug. And again, this goes back to why you need to save some clean water and be prepared to, you know, deal with whatever mess you make. Because if this is what I'm cleaning my water in and then I'm cooking in it, I have to be able to clean it out in between. So again, just reiterating that. So I'm gonna reduce this boil just a little bit because the coffee's probably gonna foam up some. I'm not sure how much, but what's cool about this is I can actually control that heat level on a fire and have to move it around in various levels of coals. So let's get that in there, kind of get it rolling. It's gonna start foaming, right? Anytime you boil something like pasta or whatever else, it foams. So we're gonna reduce that heat a little bit. All right. Now, I did clean this. 
Again, you saw me use it on dirty water. I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea. So it's been thoroughly cleaned. I used clean water that I set aside, wiped it and rinsed it, wiped it and rinsed it in different portions. So we should be good. Just want to stir that just a little bit, get it evenly mixed. I'm turn my heat back up a little bit. And we want to let it roll for about a minute. And what you're doing when you do a camp coffee, there it goes. Can't do too much, it's gonna boil out. If you're doing a camp coffee like this, essentially you're extracting a lot more of the flavor and the caffeine out of the beans. Um, so it's gonna be really bitter, it's gonna be really thick, um, and it's probably gonna be the best coffee you've ever had in your life. I actually prefer this and when I go camping and I love to spend time in creation, so this is what I do. I'll pre-grind beans or I bring a hand grinder with me, get a little $20 hand grinder off Amazon, it's a burr, but you can set for really fine or coarse. I set it to like the Turkish coffee setting, and I make this all the time. But you really gotta watch that, because if it boils over, then it's like, what am I doing? I just wasted all that water, coffee beans. All right, almost there. You can actually see, I don't know if you can get the angle, Mitchell, but you can see the different grains. For whatever reason, it's boiling more on that edge, and you can see how it's all starting to settle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it all the way off. And we just let it sit. So as you can see, it's basically completely settled down. There's a little bit of steam rolling off the top, obviously, because the temperature difference. But if you take a look at it, Mitch, it's almost like a, um, like a chocolate, hot chocolate texture color. Um, it's a lot more rich. Uh, one thing you wanna look for when you're pouring the beans, is you don't want a bunch of that sediment going into the cup. So you wanna pour really gently from the top and you wanna look for grounds. If there's no grounds coming across it, you're golden. And it's a very dark, almost like a creamy texture. And that's how we do. Oh. Bruh, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Living the dream, baby. Well, if you can't thrive, you at least have to survive. And we're gonna talk about how much this might actually suck. I can, I'm like, hee hee. So, story time. I was in Utah in like 2015 and uh, I didn't bring any water and was going on a climbing adventure or whatever in the Arches National Park. And being the homeschooler that I am, I had a life straw and uh, decided I'll just find water and drink it while I'm out there. Well, it was really hot, so lo and behold, there wasn't a lot of water. And the only thing I could find was when it was pulled somewhere in the shade or up high. So the way that those arches are formed um, is water erosion. And they actually turn into columns after about 10 or 20,000 years of erosion. So up in the top of the arch, there's always a little pool of water. So I climbed up to the top of one of the arches and there's a puddle with little you know, shrubs and ferns and little fish in it and stuff. And I drank out of it with this and I'm still alive today. Um, these things work. They are essentially a long version of an inline filter. And uh, I've actually drank a Guinness with this. I've had chocolate milk. Uh, I've drank all kind of Dr. Pepper. And it comes out, relatively speaking, like water. It's crazy. So anyway, just to prove that to you, I'm going to drink out of this scummy pond that we just did. All of that other crap to this water, I'm just going to drink it with a life straw. So. perfectly clean crazy so then just like any of the other filters you have to blow back out the other side and that's one of the problems with this system I can actually feel the difference in the weight so all that crap in there all that dirty water in there if you leave it sitting in there it's gonna get nastier right so you have to do this every use you have to do it a lot and you saw it took me like 
10 seconds of just hammering down on this thing to get anything to come out of it. And it's a very small amount of water. Look at the nozzle on this doodad. So how long do I want to be laying down by the pond just like, I'm going to drink water out of the pond if we're in any kind of scenario where I don't want to be near the water hole. So you may still need to bring some sort of collection um, bucket or whatever else. There's a large fish right there. Um, I need to bring something to grab water and then I can do this later, right? I'm about to whip this 1911 out and shoot these fish, okay? So what I don't want to have happen is that the only system I have is laying down at the watering hole like a giraffe and just sucking water out of the pond. Um, this is very much like the worst possible situation. Uh, I was talking to Orion Concepts about this the other day and he was like, if all I have is a life straw, I'm just going to kill myself. But obviously that's not uh, the point of sustainment. So this is worst case. And you probably still want to have something you can collect water in, whether that's a bucket, a bag, um, whatever else. Something to consider as well, as you just saw, the fish were like, what the hell is that sticking into the water? Stuff lives in the water. If you're in a place with crocs or gators or snakes or whatever else, you want to kind of recon the area and make sure you're not laying down in something's nest, going to get bit trying to get your water. This requires me to be at the watering hole for a long time. Animals come here, people come here. Um, so this is definitely not it, but it's definitely something you want to have. So Mitchell just reminded me of something we talked about um, earlier in the day. There's still water in this thing. You got you to... Gotta, you got to suck and blow on this thing a lot, okay, to get it to work right, I'm just saying. So back to the Bible, um, there is a story in the Old Testament where um, an Israelite general was trying to pick his forces for a, a difficult mission, and God tells him to take all his men to water and to drink from, I think, the, the Jordan, and he says to pay attention to what they're doing at the water and to only pick the men who grab the water and bring it up to them but all the guys sticking their face in the river to drink, not to take with them. So essentially, even God thinks that situational awareness at the watering hole is like a pivotal, critical point in your plan. He probably wouldn't have picked the soldiers using the life straw to go on the commando mission with him, okay? So this is absolute last resort and not the kind of thing I'm gonna be like, you have to have a life straw to make it, but if nothing else, this is a good thing to have because it allows me to drink from the scummy pond and not die. So again, multiple layers, have a lot of options. These are $20, they can filter 1,000 liters per straw. They come in a four pack for 80 bucks. Buy four of them, if you end up, that ends up being all you have, at least you can live. You should never say in conclusion at the end of a video, but in conclusion, we've got four or five systems they can all be layered, they can be used individually. Stuff that you need to be worried about when you're filtering your water is keeping separate your dirty and your clean water. You need to be worried about how much am I carrying on my person? Is it practical to carry it on my person? Is there a place I can store it back at camp? These are all factors that are gonna be individual to your situation. And this video is not about the tactical side of that. This video is about what products are out there that you can buy really easily. Literally all of this stuff is on Amazon. Uh, that was the point. So just remember, there's probably 10 ways to filter water that I didn't talk about. Uh, you have iodine tablets, other chemical tablets, uh, other filtration methods. You have inline filters. There are some people who will dirty bag a Camelback with an inline Sawyer and just drink the dirty water through the Sawyer and they don't have to do any of this. But there's pros and cons to that like I talked about at the beginning of the video. So don't take this as gospel. Take this as a little bit of knowledge you may have not had, um, something you can build on. Um, you should also consider that just watching a YouTube video is not enough and you might wanna get some actual training on that. So there's this company called Orion Training Group that offers a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, we have a website, it's oriontraininggroup.com. So if you just Google Orion Training Group, go to oriontraininggroup.com, or any of those other options, you'll see that we offer classes on this stuff and they're called sustainment. Um, Blake Flannery teaches that, he's a 20 year Marine Corps veteran, 18 years in force recon, and has done a lot of this stuff all over the world. And one of the things he focuses on in his sustainment class is water filtration, preparation, storage, and all that sort of stuff. It's three days of tactics, two days of sustainment mixed in with tactics. So that's a class that I would highly recommend. We only charge a thousand bucks for it. It's 200 bucks a day for some of the most critical, well-developed, life-saving information you may ever get if you're in a scenario where you need to survive without power. Consider that any one of these skill sets can be used for camping, you know, for leisure, 
um, you might have a hurricane or some natural disaster hits your, your, your home or your town and you need to have purified water. So this doesn't have to refer to, to a military type operation or anything like that. This is just good life saving skills. So if you've got any input, another way you prefer to do things, something to add, something constructive, drop it in the comment section. I try to go through there at least for the first six months that a video is up and actually look every you know week or two and answer any questions. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. That helps us out a lot with YouTube. And you know, share it and tell your friends. Uh, small businesses like this only grow if people know that we exist. And we're out here trying to shift the culture and change the face of the gun community or gun culture, whatever you want to call it, to be not just a bunch of people with guns in a safe, but people that are prepared and ready and understand the realities of trying to do something in a, in a, a terrible environment. So I hope you enjoyed it and you got something out of it. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.